Hotel most of the time. We weren't allowed to sightsee much. Well, didn't you have any fun at all? Oh, yes. He gave all the Russian committee men subscriptions to the Wall Street Journal. He will do anything for a laugh. Welcome home! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home! Hello! Mm. Oh, good to see you both. You too. How you been? Good, good. 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 How are you? Good, good. Good, good. Hello, this is Ellen Cousin. May I speak to the doctor, please? Yes, I'll hold on. Nice little girl. Why don't you take the bags upstairs? Oh, okay. Careful, that's a heavy one. Ah, oh, great. Where you go? Okay. <laughs> no, don't take it off. It's uh, stunning. It doesn't work as a hairpiece. Thank you. Oh. Listen, hmm? have you made a decision yet? Well, frankly, Clipper, I don't know what I want to do. Leave Saturday Review or stay. Right now I'm so bushed, the offer to go to Hawaii and run the East-West Institute sounds very appealing. No, 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 no. That's the chicken's chair. You know Ellen's penchant for fresh eggs. Sorry. Right. Oh, yeah. oh. Twenty-five years, cuz. Yeah. Dean of all New York editors. Saturday Review wouldn't be the same without you. Hell, we might even have to start working. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, Bill. I'm glad I got you in. Ellen, uh, when did you get back? We just got back from the airport. Bill, I'm a little concerned about Norman. Why, is anything the matter? I don't know. He's just not right, I can tell. Of course, he says he's all right, but you know how he is. He always says he's all right, no matter what. You better let me talk to him. Oh, good. Hold on a moment. Norman, Bill Hitze wants to talk to you. I called him. Hi, Bill. Norman, Ellen tells me you're not feeling well. It's just about gone, whatever it was. Too much borscht, if you ask me. Maybe so, but I still should take a look at you. Bill, I really don't see any reason to come in. I, I'm all right. You, you know what I need? A good night's sleep, that's all. That may be, but I'm still going to take a look at you. All right. I'll, uh, I'll call your office tomorrow and set up an appointment. That'll be fine. You're happy. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be anything. Oh, 
Are you all right? Well, I'm fine. I'm fine. I want to tell you about a dream I just had. What? Jimmy Wong of the China Trade Commission came to me and told me his oldest son tried to date Lamont White's daughter. But she wouldn't go out with him. So Jimmy Wong's second son tried to date her. She wouldn't go out with him either. So? Don't you see what that proves? Two Wongs don't make a white. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, good night, dear. I love you. Your patience with me is phenomenal. Norman, I love you, too. Mm. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'll be down in a few minutes. That's the trouble with long trips. You can't practice. You get rusty. Dos vidanya, my tobari's cheese. Well, the coffee breaks. Let's go with the donuts. Beluga caviar, the real thing. Hey, Norman, do we have to eat it? Can't we just sell it? Hi, Joan. Welcome back. It's good to be back. 
Norman, it's exquisite. Well, something I found in Leningrad. They say it once belonged to a cousin of Ivan the Terrible. But don't you believe it. <sighs> Thank you. I love it anyway. Where would you like to begin? At the top. First of all, your winter lecture tour is shaping up great. Mm -hmm. More responses from colleges and universities than ever before. Good. You're a star. Was there ever any doubt? There's a letter here from Dean Russ. Would you like me to read it? No. Okay. Office of Secretary of State, Washington, D.C. Dear Norman, I want to take this opportunity to commend you and the Saturday Review on the fine work being done. You're performing great service in stimulating serious thought about the overriding questions of the atomic age. May you carry on for many more years. Sincerely yours, Dean Rusk. That's very nice of him. I'll dictate a reply later. What's next? Pick one. Not bad. <laughs> Norman, I know you're not feeling well, so... Thank you a lot for making time for this lunch. No, I, honest to God, I appreciate your help. It's been on my mind for a while. Since before you left, uh, 60 bits of uh, briefcase, please. I mean, I'm not anti-science. No, but damn it, something has to be done to, to set the standards for experimenting on live animals. And I don't see that being approached. Thank you. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm with you, Clipper, whatever you say. Well, the point is that these corporations have a completely free hand to experiment. Burns me up. Race you back to the office. What? Race you back. Well, I'm going to beat you. you yeah, know I will. You haven't yet. Norman, because I, I let you win because you're the editor. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. On your mark. Oh, Norman. Get set. I don't, I don't want to do this. Go! <laughs> Officer, this can be explained. Yeah, sure it can. Norman, will you tell the officer it's a joke? Norman, will... Norman, will you tell the officer this is... The name is Bob part? Buster, and this is my briefcase. I can prove it because I put five dollars right under this pocket. See? See? Officer, this man is joking. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a setup. This man's my boss. He is an incorrigible spoofer. The... Oh, cuz, I'll get you for this. What? Dave, oh, this is a setup. <laughs> Norman, what is it? second floor of the hotel in Moscow. We kept the windows open. Diesel trucks kept going by all night. They must have inhaled a lot of fumes. In fact, I remember feeling nauseated every morning. Then at the airport, a big jet swung around in front of us. We caught the exhaust point blank. Could it be the hydrocarbons? Bill? Uh, how does Ellen feel? Fine. No problem with her. Well, it's possible it could affect you and not her. But if it is the heavy metal poisoning, the blood test will show it right away. Well, let me see. Ah. Uh Hurts? -huh. Uh, I know. Ah. Uh. That too. All right. Tell me about the illness during the early part of your trip. What can I tell you? The fever went to 103. Step infection? It was never identified. It left as soon as it came. Well, what about the trip itself? Frantic. One frustrating problem after another. Follow-ups all over the place. Late night paperwork, meetings. Seems as though this whole year has been like that. Yeah. I've watched you. You've been under a great deal of strain. Adrenal exhaustion. Could that be what this is all about? What? Thank you. Said 88. That's not good. What's it said? Well, it's something like a blood count, only a little more complicated. 
I'm going to put you into Mount Sinai. I want a complete workup on you. Oh, Bill, can I wait till tomorrow? I've got a lot to do today. No, I can't. Now, I know you know something about medicine, but I'm the one here with the credentials. Get dressed. I'll take you down myself. Ellen. Oh. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. He's done this home. How is he? What is he saying? Well, we know your husband. He will give you several thousand words on the state of the world. He will rage about the human condition, but just try to get him to say anything about his own. Well, do the doctors know anything now? No, they not Oh, Ellen, you know how thorough Bill Hitzig is. You'll get to the bottom of it. Don't worry, everything's going to be all right. Listen, it's right down there in 201. I'm sorry. I've got to get back to work. I'll check with you later. Bye. Thanks. False alarm. Was the cabbage borscht after all? It was the stroganoff. I'll be out in no time. <gasps> God, Cleveland was so worried I didn't know what to think. Ah! Oh! Doctor! Ah! Doctor! Perhaps we could... Doctor, set rate's still going up, 102. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Ellen, I'm, I'm sorry. We still don't have a handle on this. The, the latex test for arthritis has come up negative. But I, I'm still not convinced. I'm going to bring in Dr. Paulson. He's a very good man in rheumatology. Well, maybe he can shed some light. Ellen, uh, why don't you go downstairs and get something to eat? Oh, I'm not hungry. I've got rounds to make. Please don't stay too late. You've got a long ride home. Anything new, I'll call you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Cousin. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. White bread and boiled out vegetables. It's standard. All the pistons get it. Well, not my husband. decide what we should say about this. The UN already called about that reception. Say nothing. There are more people coming down and seeing me here. Norman, illness isn't anything to be embarrassed about. It's a private matter, and I want to keep it that way. Well, what do we tell our children? They'll know you're here. Should we call Amy in Paris? And Pigeon, she'll come running in. I don't want to upset them with this. Say as little as she can. And Shigeko, you know how she'll feel. As little as you can, Ellen. My brother or sisters call say even less. Norman, I'm not concerned about your brother and sisters, but I am about our children. You know how they feel already. How you keep them out, shut them out of your personal problems. I, I just don't see the point and worrying them over nothing. It's not nothing. It's something. There is a problem. And they're not children anymore. I can understand how they feel. Why are we making such a big thing out of this? It'll blow over in no time. I'll be out. You give it three days. Well, what about two days? <laughs> Make it one. All right, I'll check you out in half an hour, okay? <laughs> there. That's better. 
What's that? I need some blood, Mr. Cousins. Again? Four different people have taken blood from me today. Well, different departments. Can't you people coordinate and draw it from the same vial? Your arm, please. Can't you take urine instead? I can spare that a lot easier than I can blood. Hello? Just a minute, please. Yes, Bill. Emma? Uh, Dr. Paulson's coming in to see Norman. I may have something for you later today. Will you be here? Of course. I'm on my way. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. he goes there every so often for a rest. No, Mother, this is different. You driving back and forth to New York every single day. Candace and I have talked about this, Mom. We're not dumb. There's something the matter with Daddy, and we have a right to know. Sarah, there's nothing to tell you. Yes, there is. Daddy's always making decisions for us. He's got this dumb idea that he's protecting us from some kind of pain. Mom, life is full of pain. Get in the car. I'll drop you off at Linda's. Oh, never mind. I'll walk. I won't be back until late, honey. There's vegetable soup in the pot. There's fresh wheat bread that I bake. There's yogurt and plenty of fruit. I'll go to the village, Mom, and get a greasy hamburger with all the goop on it I can find. This is Dr. Paulson. Just don't squeeze too hard. I won't. Shall we uh, begin the examination? Ready when you are. I'd like to talk to both of you. Well, and here's the situation to this point. We seem to have a variety of opinions. Uh, Post-infectious strep polyarticular rheumatism. Uh, Post-infectious fasciitis. Collagen disease of some sort. An allergic vasculitis, a polyarteritis, incipient scleroderma, or possibly an atypical rheumatic fever. I see. Multiple choice. Can I pick the one I want? Please, Bill, what does he have? Yes, Taylor, what have I got? When do I get better? Frankly, Norman, I don't know. I don't know the answer to either one of those questions. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Cousins, but I need some blood. Did you see my sign? Well, yes, sir, but uh, we have to run some tests. Come back in three days. I only give blood every three days. I can't afford to give anymore. But, Mr. Cousins, we need some blood. 
What's the matter with you? You'll stick me, and then someone else will stick me, and so on and so forth. No wonder I'm weak. This hospital's bleeding me to death. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Not your fault. Look, I'll make a deal. I'll give blood if all the departments agree to draw from the same vial. Yes, sir. I'll discuss it with Dr. Hitzik. Okay. Now, don't make me move, please. This is the closest I'll ever get to heaven. Take from here. Hi. Hi. How are you? All right. What have you, what have you got there? Vitamins, minerals, enzymes. Oh, yeah. honey, I can't eat all that. You won't have to. Where are you going now? I'll be right back. You just got here. I'll be back. Hi. I'm passing out fresh vegetables, carrots, bananas. They're good for you. They'll make you get better faster. That's what you should be eating around here. I think you better check out 203. Oh, really? I'm serving fresh vegetables, carrots, bananas, much better for you than the food you've been eating here. Peppers. Have a pepper. And I'll see you again. Okay? This is cousin. She can't do that. Why not? It may not be on their diet. You're totally upsetting hospital routine. Why? By giving them decent food. You have a pepper. Come on. Yes? Yes, I've got it. Fine. All right, Norman, as soon as possible. <gasps> Who was that? Norman dictating his editorial. In the hospital? Yeah. Well, why not? You can run the magazine from Africa. You can certainly run it from the hospital. Would you like to sign that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'll catch you there. Mr. Cousin's office. Joan, is my father there? No, he's not, Chicago. When did the hives first appear? When I woke up this morning, my skin feels like it's being chewed by millions of red ants. That's probably a reaction to the butazolidine. It's not serious. Not you. I saw that. Would you stand, please? I'm not sure if I can make it. We'll, we'll increase the codeine. That, that leaves the pain. Mr. Cousins, in my opinion, based on my examinations, you are suffering from some form of paralysis which is progressive. And I think you should prepare yourself for a long-lasting disability. I'll be in my office all afternoon, Bill, if you need anything. Thank you. Bill. Now, wait a minute. I'm still not convinced. I've arranged with Dr. Rusk at the Rehabilitation Institute to have you examined by Dr. Ed Lohman. He's the number one man there. Yeah. Father? What is it? Why are you here? Oh, be careful, honey. But, Mother, what's the matter? What's wrong with Father? Uh, we don't know yet, darling. Dr. Hitzig is trying to figure it out. <sighs> The girls don't know what this is all about, and I want it that way. You've been through so much yourself, I think you can understand. I want to tell you what we know to this point. Dr. Norman? Dr. Hitson. Uh, Norman is in room 201 down the hall. I've got an emergency. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, fine. All right, now, please say when it hurts.
Uh, Mrs. Cousins? Dr. Blake, Cousins, Dr. Blake, please report to Dr. Hitzig is on his way. Shall we wait for him? Now, let's hear what you have to say. Doctor, do you have a diagnosis? I do, Mrs. Cousins. I'm sorry, but in my opinion, it's a clear-cut classical case of ankylosing spondylitis. Please let me hear it in English, Doctor. Ankylosing spondylitis. It's a degenerative bone disease. It just keeps getting worse and worse. I'm afraid there's no cure. Thanks for help. All right. I'll call you. Yes. All right. Cousins, are you all right? Miss Cousins, is there anything I can do? I was 12 years old. I was on my way to school when the atom bomb exploded over Hiroshima. I raised my hand to shield my eyes. My hand was useless after that. It was father's idea to bring the Hiroshima maidens to the United States to help them with surgery. Many other people in this country, experts, said that it was a bad idea. That the girls would not like it here. That they could not eat the food. That they would hate the Americans. Who had done them the harm? Father fought against those people hard. They were wrong. The Hiroshima maidens learned to love the Americans who, who took them in and helped them. If father had not adopted me so I could stay in this country, I would not be as I am now. I would not learn to be a nurse and support myself. We must not lose him, doctor. He's a very special person. going on? Mother, please, we've been shut out long enough. Daddy didn't want you to know. He's been protecting you. No, Mother. That's only part of it. Daddy thinks he has to be self-sufficient. He thinks that getting sick is some kind of weakness he shouldn't be exposing to us. It's more of the same thing. He's making decisions we should be making for ourselves. Mother, what is it? We want to know. It's, it's a disease of the spine. It's chronic. It's degenerative. And the spine becomes more and more immobile. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, Lamborghini, Belgian Congo, Africa. Dear Albert, thank you for your letter and for your concern over my illness. It has been diagnosed as ankylosing spondylitis. It's a degenerate illness of the spine, which I'm afraid is quite serious. I remember you writing about your midlife illness, how it completed your education. You said you joined the fellowship of those marked with pain, that ever after you would understand those who are ill and could better help them. 
By strange coincidence, I met someone with the same disease as mine. The spine would be frozen, he said. You had to decide to spend the rest of your life sitting up or lying down. Hello? Standing. What? Not sitting up or lying down. Standing. I'm going to lick it. I don't care what anyone says. Norman. What is illness anyway? A laundry list of problems to solve. A war. The other side establishes a beachhead. Your side fights back. Whatever it throws at me, I'm going to throw right back. Norman, would you please calm down? I am calm. I'm positively passive. <laughs> no. no. I know you're sitting up worrying. Stop it. Go to sleep. Sleep? Good night, darling. Bye. Morning. Morning. Morning, Mr. Cousins. Uh-huh. Hi. Ah. Oh, picnic. Right. How do you feel? Great. Everything hurts. <sighs> Let's get rid of some of the garbage. Uh-huh. Have some good food. What's your brand? Fresh everything. How about some apple juice? Give me. Now, are you interested in finishing a conversation that you started at 3 a.m. this morning? Of course. As long as you don't sit on the edge of the bed. everything worse. Unfortunately, sometimes the medical profession itself gives everyone the shakes. Ellen, I was thinking about the day the insurance doctors turned me down. Evidences of coronary occlusion, they said. Give up the work, go to bed, or you won't make it to your next birthday. Remember when I came home that day? Yes, I do. Candace and Sarah were standing at the gate with their arms out waiting for you to pick them up. Remember what I did? You picked them up. And you threw them in the air again and again. And I thought you'd gone crazy. Ellen, I had a decision to make then as to how I was going to live. I have a decision now as to how I'm going to live. Right? I'm going to keep throwing the girls in the air. Please, call the office. Get the research library. I want to get to know all about this disease. I want to lick it. Okay. Turnips, tri pepper, Bill, delicious. Forget about the vegetable salad, Norman. What do you want to talk to me about? Albert Schweitzer once told me that illness never stayed with him long. He was too inhospitable a host. Each patient, he said, carries a doctor inside him. Physicians are at their best when they give the doctor who resides in each patient a chance to work. Viz medicatrice naturea. The healing power 
of nature. Uh -huh. Well, if negative emotions can produce negative chemical changes, wouldn't positive ones produce positive chemical changes? I mean, isn't it possible for love, hope, faith, laughter, confidence, the will to live, to have therapeutic value? Oh, I mean, there's nothing so revolutionary about that. All doctors know that a patient's attitude has a large bearing on healing. Mm. I want to change my treatment. I want to start taking responsibility for myself. I want into the act, but I don't want to do it alone. I want a first-rate doctor monitoring me. Bill, I need your partnership in this. How do you want to change the treatment? I want to drop all the painkillers. Now, I know butazolidine and aspirin are anti-inflammatory. In that, they make some sense, but they're toxic. All right. You're hypersensitive to the butazolidine anyway. What about the pain? How do you expect to handle that? Well, I'll handle it if I feel I'm getting somewhere. Now, the joint inflammation, how do we get at that? Vitamin C. Norman? Now, wait a minute before you dismiss it out of hand. Vitamin C helps oxygenate the blood. There's the study. Ascorbic acid has been shown to be useful against a number of illnesses. Isn't it possible that it could also be useful against inflammation? All right. Primum non nocere. Above all, do no harm. A modest amount of vitamin C can't hurt. No, no, I don't want a modest amount. I want massive doses. And I don't want it as an intramuscular injection. I believe it'll be most effective put directly into the bloodstream. No. It would be too painful. Let alone what would happen to your veins. Too much C can affect the kidneys. I'm in agony now. I feel like I'm being slammed against a cement wall. I, get, I don't have time to worry about my kidneys now. You can keep an eye on them as we go along. Besides, the body has its own wisdom. Too much C, and then it'll be excreted. Norman, I don't want to argue with you. Argue with me! Norman, please. No, let's argue it out. This is important to me. Intravenous injections of vitamin C are too far removed from standard medical practice. Phil. You and Norman have been friends for years. He knows so much about medicine because you took him on rounds. You taught him. Yes, well, that's the trouble. He knows something about medicine, but not enough. Now, now you, listen to me. Intravenous injections of vitamin C has never been tried before. Then it's time it was tried. I have no idea of what will happen. If anything happens, you'll be right there to stop it. the condition. I say stop, we stop. No arguments, none whatsoever. Agreed. Vitamin C. You're the one who started him in the first place, aren't you? Me? Yes, yes, you. When the news gets out about what I've agreed to, my colleagues want to play hell with me. <laughs> Here, try your pepper now. Ready, Doc? Thank you. The sooner we start, the sooner we'll know. Vitamin C. I just don't know.
I said. How do you feel? How do you want me to feel? Norman, this is no time to make a joke about this. I feel great. Okay. Now I need a sedative. <laughs> well, I want to increase the vitamin C tomorrow. Gradually, I want to get it up to 25 grams. In time, in time. You rest now, Norman. I'll be back in a while. Uh, Mr. Cousins, room, please. 201. Thank you. Well, I, I am puzzled by certain aspects of the case. I... Excuse me, George. I'll see you later, Bill. Yeah. Uh, will you patience excuse me? Please, please go back to your room. Hi, Bill. Well, then, now, what, what is this? Positive emotions. The Bible tells us a merry heart works like a good doctor. The ancients pointed out that laughter is good medicine. And Sydenham himself, whoever he was, clinched it. The arrival of a good clown, he said, will be better for the town's health than 20 asses laden with drugs. No offense, Bill. I'm going to run some old Marx Brothers movies. Okay, Norman, I'm set. Roll it. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait. I've got an idea. Let's run some sed rate tests before and after and see if there's an effect. What do you think? Lad, will you send someone to 201 to draw blood? Thank you. Sid rate's gone down six points. How about that? Tomorrow it's Abbott and Costello. Oh, there's nothing to cheer about yet, Norman. A swing of a few points is meaningless. Oh, I know, but I sure feel good. I think I can sleep now. Bill, would you do me a big favor? Yes. Would you crank down my bed and put up a don't disturb sign? All right. Thanks. Oh, much better. But I just don't see how he can keep up with those jokes of his. Oh, Clipper, that's been his life. He and his mother were always tricking each other. She's put marbles in his bed, but she'd warm them first to take off the chill. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess that's what they call being a Jewish mother. <laughs> well, that smells good. What is that? Bean curd soup with matzo meal dumplings. Matzo miso. We call it Japanese cooking. <laughs> that is so bad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Did you make that up or is that a line of Norman's? Okay, listen, I think that we should talk to Pigeon, get Amy back from Paris, and get together and do something, okay? Okay. All the nurses are complaining, and I don't blame them. Patients are asking questions. Why can't we see movies, too? Well, Bill, this is a hospital, not a fun house. He plays those comic routines, he starts belly laughing, patients gather outside the door, we need crowd control just to get down the corridor. Now, you've got to do something about it, and right now. All right, all right, all right. More guys. More guys. More guys. A little more guys. We don't have any more guys. That's all the guys? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. We had a small little party. Sponge. 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 You have the sponge. Give me another sponge. I want you to all this. What's the matter? Norman, there are going to have to be some changes. You're upsetting the routine. You're disturbing the patients on the floor. Yes, I know. And it's been bothering me. Well, I'm glad to see you're so agreeable today. The movies are going to have to stop. No, no, no. That's not the change I had in mind. I've been thinking, and I've come to the conclusion, that a hospital is the wrong place to get well in. The minute you fall asleep, someone will be in to change the sheets. Damn it, Norman, be fair. It's one hell of a job running a big hospital. Yes, yes, I know. I understand. All right. Still, I've decided it's time for me to move on from here. What are you talking about? You're sick. You're going to need care. I know. Bill, you've got a lovely penthouse apartment at the Mayflower Hotel. I'll rent a small suite there. It'll work out fine. You'll be right on the spot to keep an eye on me. Right? It's a beautiful idea. The food will be better. A lot better. The rent will be cheaper, too. Isn't it a great idea? Hmm? Watch this. Two points! <laughs> Damn it, Bill. I just heard you're letting Norman leave the hospital. Is that true? Yes. That's crazy! You know what the problem is? You're too close to him. And you are letting him shove you around. Oh, Cleveland, don't you start in on me, too. Bill Norman is a rare man. He's the best damn editor this city has ever seen. And he's one of the few who cares anything about the ordinary guy. Most of them, you know, can't wait for noon Friday so they can escape to their enclaves in New England. Then they shut themselves off from the very people they say they're writing for. Norman's not like... See, the problem with Norman is his idealism carries him straight into the realm of fantasy. Experimenting on himself like this. And you're letting him get away with it. Oh, Bill, I, I understand. You don't want to argue with him because he's sick. Well, Norman is counting on that. That is abject tyranny on his part. And you're, you're letting him do it. All right, I, I, I'll argue with him. Go ahead, Avery. Argue with him. No, I can't argue. This is crazy. Norman belongs in a hospital, not a hotel. Bill, if I got a sick burrow, I'm not going to show him Marx Brothers movies. I'm going to stuff him full of the best medicine I can get my hands on. I've tried my best to do that. This isn't going to work, is it? Can you honestly tell me that you believe in this cockamamie treatment that Norman's dreamed up for himself? Can you? Cleveland, I've discussed enough medicine for one day. I'm going home to dress for dinner. No, wait, wait, wait. You haven't answered my question, Bill. Do you believe in the treatment that Norman's worked out? The important thing is Norman believes. And I think I should support him. That's not what I asked. Do you believe it? Not at all. Hello, 
Mr. Cousins. I'm Nurse Francis. Hi, Mr. Francis. Hello. Very nice, isn't it, Cleveland? Yeah, it's going to be great. Norman, if the news gets out, you're going to empty all the hospitals and fill up all the hotels. Norman, I think I'm going to like this. It beats the hospital. Everything's coming up roses. It's different. I haven't had this before. Put me right back in the hospital. Wait till morning, then we'll see how it is. In the morning. But, darling. No. Oh, please. Okay. I'll be right back. Not with me around. Was I too brash? Was it a mistake to leave the hospital? No. If it was right yesterday, it's still right today. Still do it. What? Throw back whatever he throws at me. Open your mouth. Anything new to tell me? Now, don't kid me, Norman. It's in the jaw now, isn't it? Now, you listen to me, both of you. If you want my cooperation in this, if you want me to be a partner, I simply will not put up with your keeping anything from me. You can hide whatever you want from anyone else, but not from me. Is that clear? I'm sorry, Bella. Of course you're right. Now, you can keep on laughing your head off, and I'll keep on with the vitamin C. But you're going on round-the-clock, nurses, and no argument it's called for. And one thing more. If this shows signs it's getting worse, you're going right back into Mount Sinai. Can you get that? Let's go, let's go. Let's talk to Dad. 
talk to you. Let's what? bring him over. Mr. Cousins. Oh, no, no, it's all right, Francis. These are my daughters. Yeah. Does your mother know you? No, Daddy. Mother doesn't know we're here. She doesn't even know Amy's back. Daddy. Hmm? Do you remember what she wrote in the Saturday Review Credo? What? Why, well, I wrote a lot of things. Because I, I wrote that the magazine is by natural right the property of the readers. That a writer must believe in what he writes. That cynicism is a waste of time. Daddy, your paragraph on feelings. That honest sentiments, honest passions, and honest indignations are among the highest expressions of conscience. That there is no need to feel shy or awkward or embarrassed in their presence. We're mad, Daddy, all of us. Shutting us out is a sign of disrespect. It's not right. It's telling us what's good for us and what isn't. And we should be deciding ourselves. You think Shikeko can handle it better because of all she's been through. But that's not true. Daddy, we love you. We're family. We want to be in on this, Daddy. We want to help you with what you're doing. Please. Daddy... Don't shut us out. Francis. Looks very cloudy. It is. Let me see it. My golly, you're right. Let me run it through again. Quitting, Doctor. That's all. I'm quitting right now. 
I thought I was going to have apple pudding. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. It was not a nice trick to fall. I'm sure Norman will apologize when he realizes how you feel. It's not funny. Norman? Doctor, we just can't have it. Now, we have many older people in the hotel. They need their rest. I understand. Can't Mr. Cousins play the organ more softly? I'll talk to him. Can't he laugh more softly also? I'll talk to him. You still yakking it up with Cousins, Bill? Oh, Stu, I don't want to argue with you, but at least try to understand what Norman means. He's not claiming that laughter is going to cure someone. I should hope not. I'd be turning my practice over to Bob Holton. He only means it sets a positive tone right. and up mood. So vitamin C can do the job, eh? Still shooting him up, though? No, he's taking it orally now. You've got to stop this, Bill. You're practicing placebo medicine. What do you mean, placebo medicine? No medicine at all, just keeping the patient happy. Look, this is going to erupt in a totally different way if it hasn't already. Bill, you're a highly respected physician. Your reputation is impeccable, but you've become the laughingstock of the hospital. I don't like to see that just because you're a good and caring man. You've got to protect yourself. Disassociate yourself from Cousin's nonsense. Thank you, George, for your concern. But I've got to go by what I see. We're getting good results for the first time. Besides, sometimes placebo medicine works better than real medicine. Bill, I know it may not seem like it, but not all of us are laughing. Some of us are still willing to learn from our patients. Thank you. Yes, yes, I'm feeling much better. Thanks for calling. If I can make it, I... Most certainly will. All right. Okay, bye-bye.
No. Please, Norman. No. Norman! No. Honey. No. Okay. Here. I'll just take your arm and I'll help you too. No. Let me know it myself. Now you can call Bill. This is nonsense. Norman belongs in a hospital. For God's sake, what's the matter with the two of you? Just because you wish for something doesn't make it so. Cleveland, please keep your voice down. Norman is sick. This is not a head cold he's fighting. I, he, can, he cannot lick this thing just by sheer force of will. Girls. Guess I'm gonna need more of your help. Looks as though we're we've still got a way to go. We're here, Daddy. We're with you. Remember a few years ago when I was teaching you chess? The TV was on. It was an anniversary day of some sort. They began to show pictures of the victims of Hiroshima. I remember. I worried about you seeing them. Wanted to turn the set off. Remember what you said? Yes. Tell me again. I said I could take it. Me too. And Hideko Sumemura. You remember her. She was the youngest maiden. She has two babies now. Terue Takeda has three children. And Yoshi Harada has two. I see. What you're saying is, when I get all better, I can also get pregnant. Oh, no. <laughs> well, how's he doing, Bill? Working a miracle, I suppose. Well, he's making very good progress. Frankly, I'm amazed. Really? Then it isn't ankylosing spondylitis. I see. If he gets better, he doesn't have it. If he doesn't get better, he does. Isn't that a hell of a way of arriving at a diagnosis? Well, mistakes have been known to be made. Don't argue with me, George, about what Norman has. Argue with the number one man at Rusk's. He knows what Norman has. Uh, I'm Rose Ferrelli. I call from downstairs. Come in. I'm Rose Ferrelli, Mr. Cousins. I saw you several times at Mount Sinai. I, I don't think you noticed me. I'm sorry I did, Mrs. Ferrelli. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Would you like a cup of tea? No, no, thank you. Um, my husband was uh, at Mount Sinai the same time that you were there. He was sitting just down the hall from you. We used to hear you laughing and... Your wife brought us fresh vegetable. My husband is uh, very ill, Mr. Cousins. He's very, very ill. They 
say that there's no hope. They sent him home to me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Shirley. They say nothing can be done for him. I want him to go on the routine that you went on for yourself. I heard them talking about it at the hospital. I want you to explain it to me so that we can do it at home. Mrs. Frilly, I'm not a doctor. It's not right for me to prescribe. I told you. They say nothing can be done. I can't let it go like that. Excuse me. Mrs. Ferrelli, this is my doctor's phone number, Dr. William Hitzig. Have your doctor call him. He'll explain it all. Thank you, Mr. Cotton. God bless you. Please, let me know what happens. Yes, of course I will. said that you were here. Miss Frilly, what happened? Did your doctor call mine? Yes, Mr. Cousins. Your doctor told my doctor that your regimen is a lot of bull. I thought you might want to know that. Mrs. Frilly, I'll write down everything I'm doing and mail it to you. But listen, you've got to understand that I'm not saying that every illness can be overcome. And you shouldn't try it without the help of a good doctor. I'm not disrespectful of the medical profession as a whole, far from it. But find a doctor who will join you and your husband as a partner. And who knows that the body can write its own prescription. Thank you, Mr. Cousin. Good luck. Call me if you need any help. I will. Goodbye. Clever, I'm going to change. Then take me to Hitsy, will you? Sure. Hey. Any questions? Well, that'll be all. Thank you. Dr. Hill, emergency telephone. Dr. Hill, emergency telephone. Dr. Schaefer, check in with you. Norman. Bill, I... did you tell Mrs. Farrelly's doctor that the regimen I'm on is a lot of bull? No. Norman, I've got an important meeting. Mrs. Farrelly said her doctor told I her... I did not use that word. If it was used, it was her own doctor's embellishment. But you did say to him that you didn't believe in what I was doing. No, Norman. I do not believe in vitamin C therapy. Well, I'm a lot better. Look at me. Yes, I know. And they all said that that I, kind of a treatment... I, never... I know what they said. Well, why am I getting better? What is it? I don't know. I 
don't know why. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, it's remission or misdiagnosis or placebo effect or sunspots. I don't know if your progress will continue or the whole thing will tumble down on you without notice. Why have you gone along with it all this time? Because you believed. Because nothing else was working. Because I love you and I'm willing to try anything, reasonable or otherwise. But don't ask me to believe in something that has only the most superficial kind of research validity. I'm a trained medical practitioner. I believe in a scientific method. I believe that, and only that, has allowed medicine to come out of the dark ages. I cannot, and I will not go against it. And I will not prescribe for anyone a therapy I do not believe in, no matter how much good it seems to be doing you. I must have demonstrable proof. I must go slowly and carefully. I cannot chance following whim. I'm under oath. I will not risk doing harm. That proves I'm a whole lot better. You're willing to argue with me. All right, Norman. You believe as you will, and I'll believe as I do. Hmm. Bill, I think it's time to give this body of mine a real test. What would you say if I told you I was going to the beach? Norman, are you insane? You're going to kill yourself. No. I'm just going to beat this thing. Take it easy. We're trying to help you. Yeah, yeah. Walk past us. You're doing fine. You're doing fine, Clipper. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, too. We're going to the beach. You guys ought to get in the water with me? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? How about you, Clipper? I don't hear you. You, you first. Prepare. It's going to be uh, bracing. It's oh, going to be bracing. What fortunate word choice, don't we? All right. Let's take them off. Hold still. Stand still. There. You lift your foot for me now. Thank you. Okay. I feel fine. 
all right. Yeah, he is. You know, when he was a boy, his family used to call him the professor. He had something to say about everything. And he also had a very strong mind of his own. Good thing, too. I love him, Cleveland. You know, I never thought it was possible to love anyone so much. He's doing extremely well. What? Oh, I see. Yes, I'll tell him. Thanks for keeping in touch, darling. See you soon. That was Bill Hipsick. He says the weather in New York is great, but the hotel doesn't want you back. <laughs> you should be damn glad you play the organ, not the drums. That's okay. That's okay. It won't be necessary, because we're not going back to the hotel. Excuse, please. Happy day, sweetheart. My name is Professor Weizenhofer, Ph.D., University of Upper Silesia. My card, if you please. Yes, Professor, what can I do for you? Exactly. You see, sweetheart, I have geschrieben un paper on the Crippet Martians. The Crippet Martians by Professor Joseph Weitenhofer, Ph.D. The Crippet Marshes are wonderful marshes. They are big marshes. They are deep marshes. They are very wet marshes. Professor. They suck people in. What the hell's going on here, Joni? Oh, Mr. Norman Cousins. Mr. Norman Cousins, to be sure. Such pleasure, Professor Weitenhofer. Congratulations. I have choose you to publish my paper on the Crippet Marsh. You see, the Crippet Marsh by... Professor, this is not Mr. Cousins. Nein? Then where is Mr. Cousins? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Mr. Cousins isn't here. No? So I wait. I go into his office. I sit and I wait. Uh. Oh, I told you I'd get you back. <laughs> I ran it on you. I told you you were coming back to work. We set you up for once. I love it. And you love it. Right. I Wonderful idea, didn't we, girl? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, Clipper. I acknowledge defeat. <laughs> All right, and, and everybody. I just want to say for everybody here, because this place hasn't been the same without you around, and we're glad to have you back, even as the old professor. <laughs> Thank you, Clipper. Thank you, everybody. I'm... I'm very proud of all the things that we have done here through the years. 
I, I think you all know how much this place means to me. Uh, <laughs> next to my family, nothing means more. Illness is a great clarifier. We, uh, we get well, not simply to get well, but to do something. This is what I do. I edit the Saturday Review, and I plan to go right on doing it. <laughs> I, um, uh, I learned a couple of other things from the illness. It brought about greater understanding between my daughters and myself, and it reaffirmed the value of a close family. I found out that there are some doctors who are all too quick to pronounce doom. And you must never underestimate the power of positive emotions, nor the incredible regenerative powers of the mind and body. Now I want to say something about the one I consider to be the real hero in all that's taken place, Bill Hitzig. shall always be most grateful to him. He took an enormous amount of abuse, but he had the wisdom and courage to treat not the disease, but the patient. I think it's fair to say he knows that the art of healing is still a frontier profession. And he knows no one can tell what advances will come from new knowledge about the workings of the human mind. Yes, yes, Norman, that's, that's fair to say. But none of that changes my mind about the vitamin C therapy. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, Bill. I love you anyway. <laughs> Where's that champagne? <laughs> all right, uh, Joan, you ready to work? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, take a spoof.